What's up, Bike North fans? I'm Tyler, and I'm here in the Swiss Alps, which you cannot see behind me, but you will see in just a minute with a lot of riding footage and amazing scenery. And I'm here to try out the all new BMC Urz LT. So this takes the same frame as their Urz Gravel Plus bike with big 45 millimeter tire clearance and adds a really, really trick front suspension that's just 20 millimeters of travel that makes a world of difference. You combine that with their uh, micro suspension here in the rear and this is one hell of a good bike. So let's take it on the trail and show you the close up details of what makes this thing tick. The first thing you should notice about the Urz LT is their micro suspension fork, but it's so subtle that it easily passes for an external headset cup. What's impressive is that they were able to add it to the original Urz frame without changing geometry, and that's because they've been planning this all along. It works in concert with their MTT rear suspension, which uses an elastomer spring and damper to give the rear wheel about 10 to 15 millimeters of travel at the axle. They first used it on their World Cup racing hardtail mountain bikes to soak up vibrations and little bumps, and it works quite well here too. The fork uses carbon fiber legs to save weight and aid vibration damping, but it's the micro suspension that really does the heavy lifting. Designed in collaboration with High Ride, it's a coil spring with hydraulic damper that delivers 20 millimeters of very smooth travel. And there's an on-off lockout dial at the top. I'll show you the internals and how it works a little later in this video. Like the rigid fork on the original Urs, this has dedicated internal routing for a dynamo front hub. An entry port sits just inside the dropout and it exits at the crown. The frame is designed for one by drivetrains only, and both models will come with SRAM road cranks and Eagle mountain bike cassettes and derailers. The down tube gets clear frame protection most of the way down with a bigger plasticky rock guard over the bottom bracket area that surrounds an extra bottle cage mount. BMC says the idea was to give riders a more capable bike suitable for anything from racing to bike packing, and to do it in a way that added traction and confidence so you can go faster and push harder. The design was four years in the making because they wanted something that was truly optimized for gravel, not just shrunken mountain bike suspension. It's designed to keep the tires planted on the ground, letting you rip high-speed corners and soak up all the harsh bumps and vibrations that cause fatigue, so you can keep ripping those corners longer. For racers, there's another benefit. You can run narrower, lighter weight tires at a slightly higher pressure because the suspension is doing the work that we normally rely on tires to do. And slightly higher pressures should reduce the chances of a race-ending pinch flat. For the rest of us, it just means we can keep big 45 millimeter wide tires on there and shred the gnar harder than ever. 20 millimeters may not seem like a lot of travel, but BMC actually measured the vibration frequencies of everything from smooth tarmac to typical XC mountain bike trails and every type of dirt and gravel road between them. Then they built a micro suspension to tame those specific frequencies. The result is a bike that tracks over rough terrain and loose grit incredibly well. And it manages to kill a lot of the vibration, about 47% according to them, that typically makes your hands numb and arms tired. Fortunately, the rest of the bike is pretty sweet too, with geometry that's well suited to everything from climbing to ripping mountain passes and unkempt forest roads. Okay, let's take a closer look at how the fork actually works. The suspension is housed entirely inside the steerer tube and was developed in partnership with High Ride. The steerer bolts to a metal insert bonded into the carbon legs, so it's removable for service, and they say it's every bit as strong as, and probably stiffer than, typical suspension forks. It'll come with a medium spring rate installed, but soft and firm springs, as well as three different preload spacers, will be available so you can custom tune the suspension to your weight and riding style. Inside, a hydraulic damper tames the motion and controls both compression and rebound. A low pressure design with light seals keeps it moving freely. They used a coil spring because it offered the best small bump sensitivity with zero stiction. Where an air spring would be a bit lighter, it would also require high pressure seals that would add friction and diminish its ability to manage tiny bumps and vibrations. 
and you'll see why that's good in just a second. But first, it's worth pointing out that the design requires an open space under the lower headset bearing. It's a sealed bearing, but you should probably gently clean out this space after particularly dusty or muddy rides. Just no pressure washers, okay? So here's what I mean by tiny bumps and vibrations. This is just normal, relatively mild gravel road, and you can see just how active the suspension is. Every bit of movement you see here is something that's no longer reaching your hands and arms. This is what it looks like when I was standing and climbing. You can see the bobbing, but in all honesty, I could not tell while I was riding. Perhaps most impressive is that even on big hits at high speed, I never once felt the same bottom out. Here's another angle that shows it working. What you want to watch is what happens here when I start braking right about now. You can see it compress, as any suspension fork will, but there's still a bit of travel left to do its job. Most every gravel ride includes at least a bit of pavement, and for that, there's a full lockout knob. But I never felt the need to use it. The bike motors along as fast as you can pedal it, as smooth as can be. And the frame is plenty stiff where it needs to be, letting you lay down the power on the climbs, or finish line sprints. The geometry is great for cruising along, mile after mile, hour after hour, and its road manners are impeccable. It's very stable at high speed, so you won't feel out of place on a group ride or drafting in a pack. And provided your tires aren't too knobby, it's even quite adept at carving twisty, high alpine mountain roads. But as we've all learned by now, getting off the road is way more fun. It's not just the fork that's doing the work. Their MTT rear suspension may not look very active, but it's definitely keeping that rear tire glued to the ground. And like the front, it's saving my backside from feeling every little pebble along the way. When you do pair it with bigger tires, it's almost like someone smoothing the path in front of you. For racers, it could literally be a game changer on 100 mile events. Basically the Urs LT is a do-it-all gravel bike that is surprisingly capable on real mountain bike trails with real roots and real rocks, even though it's such a small amount of suspension, but it just works. And the biggest thing is, it just inspires so much confidence on really rough gravel roads, especially those fire road descents, those forest roads where it's loose, you can slide out. It just keeps the traction on the ground so incredibly well. It's like, it's almost mind blowing to be honest how good the wheels track the ground and whew, I gotta say this has been a long day riding but man so much fun hey thanks a ton for watching if you want to see all the tech specs and the full features just search BMC on bikerumor.com and you'll find the launch story along with the full review for this bike if you like this and you want more great cycling tech and bike reviews hit like hit subscribe and until next time keep the rubber side down